Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Turn of Events, where we help put a positive spin on the future of your business. Have you ever wondered when is the right time to invest time and money into branding? Well, we are going to talk about that today. I'm Annette Nafe, the CEO and Creative Director of Nafe Productions. We are a strategic event production company based in New York and also in Florida, in Boca Raton, but we produce events all over the world. Um, we uh, specialize in corporate, social, nonprofit, and weddings, live, virtual, hybrid, whatever you're looking for. Happy to consult with you if you'd like to talk about how to take a live event to virtual. We still do have clients that are doing virtual events. Very few, but we still do. Uh, if you are a wedding or event planner and you are looking to start your own business or you have a business and you're struggling, please come join us at the Event Planner Society Facebook group. Lots of great, driven, creative, passionate planners, wedding and event planners in there. It's not for um, any vendors or, or any of my vendors. I love my vendors, but it's only for wedding and event planners. Love to have you. So much great networking. I give amazing tips. I'm always teaching and I'm going to be doing a workshop in August. I'm going to be launching a workshop. So you don't want to miss out on that. Come over to the Event Planner Society Facebook group. Okay. So my next guest is Johanna White. She, we're going to be talking about leveraging the power of your brand to show your value and increase your impact. Johanna is an award-winning graphic designer and visual branding strategist who designs premium brand identities that create impactful first impressions. As the founder of Design by Joe Studio, she believes that if someone is the best of what they do, they deserve to look like it which I totally agree. For the past decade, she's worked with everyone from individuals to Fortune 200 brands worldwide to help magnetize their brand, I'm sorry, their dream opportunities, clients and investors, and be a delightful and be as delightfully expensive as they deserve to be. I love that. Joanna knows there's no limit on success as she's proved it several years ago when she took life by the horns and started three businesses within one year while battling brain, a brain tumor. That's incredible. And we're going to talk about that. So at a time when everyone else in her life was struggling, that she quit, was suggesting that she quit working and go on social security to cover medical bills. She chose to do the opposite and defy the odds. As a result, Johanna is, Johanna, excuse me, is a, is a now a dreamer extraordinaire for top performers, elite experts, and companies who are driven to maximize their impact. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank and I, you for having me. I'm so going to destroy. It's Johanna. So please, I want to get that right. It's extreme. But that's just an extraordinary, uh, I mean, that's extraordinary. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, I know there's lots of people who, um, you know, medical, something medical happens and they have to keep a business going, but you started three businesses. That's crazy. <laughs> so why don't you talk a little bit about that? I guess I uh, did go about that a little bit different than um, <laughs> the norm, but it, it came about because I had spent the first 25 years of my life um, up to that point playing it very safe and not taking risks and not going after things that I wanted and um, staying below the radar fear of haters or for fear of rejection and all of those things. But I always knew I felt like I was meant to have a bigger impact and there was so much within me, so many talents and gifts I had been given. And when out of the blue, I went from being perfectly healthy to diagnosed with a brain tumor and having partial paralysis down my left side, um, food coming out of my nose instead of going down my throat, goals, migraines and collapsed vocal cords. Like, and the, the doctors just coming back repeatedly with the results are inconclusive. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So it, it went from this very safe, certain life to suddenly uh, no idea how much time was left. And I looked around at, at the job I was at, which was in the design industry, but it was creative services department. And it was like bottom of the totem pole as far as the, the amount of work I was doing and really the amount of impact that that work had on clients. 
And I knew I wasn't even coming close to living up to my potential. So with no known amount of time left on the clock, as it were, I looked around and went, I'm not going out like this. Yeah. And one, I do everything I can to fight this. And this is not the end. I'm not going to take the doctor's word as the last word. But two, I do only have a little bit of time left. I want to spend that time with the people that I care about doing things that matter. And if it's going to be work, then it's going to be work that makes an impact. So right. I decided that there was nothing left to lose and no more time to be made. So yeah. I quit my job, literally like Mary Kay ladied my way down the street from the office being on door saying, hi, I'm Johanna. I design stuff. Do you need stuff designed? And just got like a few initial clients, literally like door to door. And then um, that was enough for me to say, okay, I'm in, this is happening. I filed my first LLC with a whopping eight hours of work on the clock. Um, and, <laughs> and so that's kind of how it began because I, I knew that I could do what people were suggesting. Um, I didn't have health insurance at the time. And there was people saying like, Johanna, you could be looking at six figures, multiple six figures in brain surgery and, and medical bills from this. It's smart to quit your job that's paying peanuts anyway, and you don't have health insurance and just go on Medicaid so that you can get some help with that. Right. And I thought about it. And then I thought if I did that, I would be the person who backed down when things got tough and I would maybe be three more years down the road and still doing nothing with my life that mattered. And right. I didn't have that much time to lose. So I made the decision instead to start Design by Joe. Clearly it was not an auspicious beginning. We've come <laughs> a long way <laughs> now doing luxury brands from start to finish, but it was a beginning and it gave me something to focus on on the other side of the, the brain tumor diagnosis. And it gave me something to look at and say, there is a Johanna on the other side of this mess and she is strong and she is capable and she is not afraid and she makes things happen. So I made a different choice perhaps, but it turned out to be one of the best ones I could have made. That's amazing. That's so touching. I, I love that. And it's so inspiring for others who might be going through the same thing right now and trying to keep their business going. So good for you. I'm so happy that you're here and talking to us. And so let's talk about some branding here because, you know, we all want to learn how to grow our businesses and, and look expensive and get paid what we're worth. Right. So um, let's get started. So when it comes to a visual brand, what are some cues that make our brain perceive it as premium versus commodity? Well, that's a great question. And I love it because it goes past, it skirts past the obvious. So most people would think you would answer that question with something like, well, if your brand is sleek and, and black and white, or it's, it's got gold and marble, or you use some of those visual triggers automatically if my logo is in gold that means i'm going to be perceived more as a luxury brand mm -hmm. maybe some of those things certainly are part of brand positioning but when it comes down to it what really makes our brains perceive a brand as premium is consistency and even more than that it's intentionality mm -hmm. it's fact that there was a reason behind why something looks the way that it does there is a reason behind the message and the message of the brand um, is being used to create the visuals. And you can no longer say a specific color or a specific font screams luxury. I mean, look at where fashion brands are going these days and it's coming on the runway that sometimes, most of the time right now, looks like it came out of my grandpa's dumpster. <laughs> but <laughs> that is not that does not make it not luxury and because of their established brand intention and the story they tell with it people are still lining up to pay thousands of dollars for a jacket that is five sizes too big and right. shredded down the middle 
Yeah. And so I just use that as an example to say it's not about a specific color, a specific font. It is intentionality. It is creating perceptions that drive emotion. Mm. That is what our brain perceives as premium. Yeah. And that's commodity great. on the flip side is looking the same as everyone else. It is um, having a visual <laughs> identity that is scattered and happened to you by default instead of design. Your logo might still be gold, but if you got it on Fiverr and all you did was tell them, hey, I like castles and grass, make this beautiful. There's no intention behind why it looks like that and it won't have the same power. And the logo itself is just a tiny piece of the brand. Right. But people think like, okay, if my website has, has, you know, they, I'm just going to find a web developer and say, I work in, you know, this, the event planning industry, find me a template, make me something that works. But there's no intentionality behind it. There's no story that they're telling. And because right. of that, you see it and there's a disconnect because if you've ever actually met that person or worked with them, their, their visual brand isn't going to truly yet represent the essence of what makes them unique. And so that disconnect happens and it breaks something in the brain between it feeling like, oh, expertise, excellence, premium, or yeah, that looks like every other event planner I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, I, I might consider them, but I hope they charge the same or less. And, right. you know, I'm just going to consider them from a pool. So premium versus commodity comes down to intentionality and then getting consistent about how you show that intention. Great, great. So speaking of charging, how can a, a great brand impact your ability to charge what you're worth? Well, pricing is subjective, right? Mm -hmm. We like to think it's all based on what other people are doing in the market or where yeah. the market is right now or we like to think pricing is based simply on the quality of your product, and that certainly does matter. But what makes someone pay $350 for a Michael Kors purse or $4,000 for a Louis Vuitton purse when right. they're made of the exact same thing, made with the same quality, sometimes even produced in the same manufacturing facilities? Right. Well, that, that differs the brand, and it is that Louis Vuitton has spent years with so much intention telling their story, creating brand perceptions. They have positioned their brand um, next to other things that people think of as luxury, as desirable. And so because of that, it allows them to charge whatever they want to charge. And they, say they still have the raving fan clients that are lining up saying, yes, I want it. <laughs> and so when it comes to a service-based business, I like I did this to my own brand years ago. The brain tumor was over and it was time to say, okay, I made it, but I only made it from one business where I got unpaid to now I have my own business where I get underpaid and I'm my own boss. So this is worse. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at my business and I realized it was because I was showing up like a commodity. I was looking the same as everyone else. My website was a great portfolio where I just sent people there and let them draw their own conclusions. I had no messaging. I had no way really of speaking directly to my ideal clients. I had great work, but that was it. And I started realizing that what people wanted to pay for was not just a service. People want to pay for a solution. They pay commodity prices for a service and they pay premium prices for a solution and they pay luxury prices for an experience. And so I said, okay, I need to position my brand. Uh, I need to go from looking like a commodity, looking like just another service they can choose to looking like the solution for their luxury branding needs. And even more than that, someone may not know that what they need is a premium brand. That all they know is I'm not attracting the kind of clients that I want to attract or I'm constantly stuck undercharging because 
I tell someone it costs this and they say, but why, why does it cost that? I don't understand. Or I tell one to you in the face that I can create this amazing, beautiful event for you. But then when they go to my website and they see that it is, you know, templated, scattered or unclear, they say, well, they sounded great when I talked to them, but everything I see, how they show up in the world does nothing to visually validate that value that they were presenting. Right. And so that is why your brand very much affects what you can charge. Right. And when I talk about like luxury branding, that may not be the right market position for everyone, but the principles still apply as far as getting very intentional about who you want to speak to and creating intentional messaging and imagery that puts that person into your world, that addresses right. the, the true problem that you solve for them and that pulls in, helps them feel like oh, they get me and therefore they get my problem. They understand what I'm going through and they have exactly what it takes to solve that. Right. So it's funny because when I first started my business, and I have a lot of uh, wedding and event planners who are in my Facebook group that are just starting out, um, you know, I don't, I teach them not to spend a lot of money on their website when they first start. They don't need to, but when I just because, you know, it's going to evolve, you're going to have five different websites over the, <laughs> your lifetime and even more. So, but, um, you know, the focus is just getting started and getting clients and getting going. But, when I first started, I had this, you know, little rinky dink website that I put together myself because I didn't want to spend the money. I was, you know, still trying to get clients and all of that. Um, but it was important to me that, you know, like I had a, like I looked like I was luxury. That was important. Then even though I didn't even have any clients at that time, even though I had been in business, uh, been, you know, I'd been doing events for 20 years. I just didn't have my own clients. I had just started my business. It's been 13 years now, but, um, and then the next time, so there, it evolved into, and you're saying, it's funny that you say this, but when I, got to a point where I really looked like luxury and all the pictures and all the work that I was putting up, there was sometimes people would think that I was too expensive for them. So you can't win, right? So it's sometimes it's like you're trying to look so luxury and then you do and they're like, oh, she's going to be way more expensive than we can afford. And that's not the case. It's our, we're all about um, you know, what's the scope of the work and how many hours it's going to take and all of that. So, you know, it never, it never really, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will look like that, but I, I had, you just th reminded me of a couple clients along the way or potential clients that didn't, you know, they were, didn't think that they were going to be able to afford us because we were looking luxury. So I guess sometimes you can't win, <laughs> but I get what you're saying about that. It's Actually, really do you mind if I respond to that? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. That concept. So yeah. I would say your brand, your brand was doing exactly what it should. It was polarizing. Great brand should be. It should attract your most perfect client and it should like nudge away the people that aren't so that you don't have to spend all day long fielding unqualified leads. Right. If your ideal client isn't actually the luxury market and you want to serve the every man, perhaps your brand positioning would do well to be shifted to right. something that looks more like the like level of pricing you want to charge. And in that case, then it would, it would appeal to them. But if you, you can not serve everyone. Right. Right. So a, like to the perfect client, you will be the right price no matter what it is. And to the wrong client, you will always be too expensive or to the wrong client, you may not be expensive enough. There is a whole right. like <laughs> there's a whole uh, of it, right? There is a whole tier of the market who uses the price of some to consider it as whether it's quality enough for them. Like they use that as part of the determining factor. And so you literally don't want to win everyone. Right. You'll you'll get far more market share when you are very, like you dial in your brand to be very clear to the person you want to serve. And so if it's that your visuals are scaring off people that you actually want to serve, 
perhaps there could be a tweak in the messaging about, you know, look like luxury, but pay like this, you know, you could identify that in some way or let it be okay that you scare them away. If that's not who you want to work with the most, who you're best positioned to serve and who you can create the most freaking amazing delight experience for that really um, lets you use all of your talents and gifts and the awesomeness that you bring to the table. So I would actually say your brand is working. (laughs) That was a while ago, but it was just a funny experience to think I worked so many years to get like, you know, noticed as a luxury brand or, you know, that experience, all that stuff that comes along with all those years that I had put into it. And then to have mm-hmm. someone say, uh, you know, I think you're too expensive or you might be too expensive. So we're, you know, you, we can't afford you. And I was like, that's so f- interesting, right? It's just interesting how that <laughs> sometimes happens. Not too many times, but it is kind of funny. But the message is you- really important. Yeah. You just felt the other side of the luxury brand positioning, which is the exclusivity. And sometimes yeah. it hurts a little to think, oh, yeah. what? I want to serve everyone. Yeah. And what if my brand scares them away? But it's okay. There's someone else perfectly positioned to serve that person. And so, yeah. Yes. I think and you nailed it. There will be others. So, you know, anytime we've, you know, it's a constant, uh, you, there will be other people that are going to be the right clients for you. So um, you don't have to worry mm-hmm. about that. You just have you, to keep going, be consistent. That's all. Right. Yep. And you will have you will have better outcomes when you work with the people that are most aligned with your vision as right. well. Like you will be able to give them their vision and their dream and you'll get better outcomes, better reviews, all of those kind of things. So. Right. Right. Great. Great. OK, so how can someone know if leveling up their visual brand is something that will boost their business right now? Well, a lot of times a business gets stuck and it either comes down to I've got a branding problem or I've got a marketing problem. They're not the same thing, but they do work hand in hand. So I like to ask my clients a few different questions just to kind of hone in on what's happening here. So, for example, if you are getting a lot of sales calls, like, you're doing your marketing, you've got some funnels or you've got some lead gen happening and you're doing sales calls, but not closing very many of them. Mm -hmm. It's very likely that you have a branding problem because they're coming to you, but they don't see what they want when they get there or they don't connect with what you're doing. Um, If you are, let's see, if you are afraid to promote yourself to the world like you could be because you look at your website or your social media and you're a little embarrassed by it or maybe you're not embarrassed but you just feel like meh it it's good but nothing about it really represents the the uniqueness that I have to offer you might have a branding problem and you can benefit a lot and get a lot of ROI from dialing that in because you are your best advocate And if you're not feeling proud, excited to um, talk about what you do because you don't want to send anyone to see how you're showing up in the world, you've got a branding problem. Um, If you don't know how to clearly say what it is that you do, or maybe if you don't even know what is your X factor, what makes you so different in in your niche, then you would benefit a lot from the message strategy part of a branding project. Um, With my clients, I take them through three steps and say the first one is first know your value. So you can't position your brand or show up a certain way way in the world if you don't know what it is that really makes you special and amazing and different. Step two is then once you know it, you got to show it. Become a show it all and show your value. And that is where the visual part of the brand comes into play. And then step three is that you need to always find a way to add more value. That is creating some of those brand experiences, which is where you help a lot with the experience side of things. 
Right. Um, but it's, it's not just enough to build a beautiful brand and then walk away. If you build it and it looks like everything you aspire to be, now you get to level up and live up to it by finding ways to serve your clients better in the way that they would like to be served by creating more of an experience when they work with you, not just a transaction. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are a few ways that that brand can drive ROI. If you have a beautiful website and beautiful social media and you show, if you feel like you're well represented, but no one's knocking down the door to get on a call with you, you probably have a marketing problem because <laughs> it's not, a brand is not, if you build it, they will come. Right. You still need to get the leads, you know, network, market, advertise, put yourself out there, funnels, whatever your strategy is, if it's blogging, podcast, or whatever. It's very likely that um, you need to get some traction and would do better to spend your dollars first on that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's important that you know what your brand is, build that foundation so that your marketing dollars aren't just throwing spaghetti at the wall. Right. So that they're not just putting ads out there that don't actually communicate your message. Right. So That's those are a couple of ways to look at it like, which problem is holding me back right now? <laughs> yeah, and, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Okay, great. So what's a common myth about your industry area of business? Well, actually, you might end up cutting, like muting me for saying this, but one of the very <laughs> first things you mentioned. No, I won't. The beginning Go for it. Okay. I'll just say it. One just of the, what I find, what I find to be one of the common myths yeah. is that it, you don't need to worry about your brand until later. Um, because in reality, branding is building perceptions and they are always being built. They're either happening to you by accident or they're happening by you on purpose. You are intentionally choosing how to present yourself in the world and how to serve clients. And so while it may not make sense when you're first starting to invest a lot of money into brand, it does make sense to invest a lot of time and energy into it, into getting very intentional about what perceptions you want to create. And uh, like a lot of people think of their brand like a form of business identification. It's mm -hmm. something you need, like getting your passport, go to the go to the post office and get your passport photo taken and it's done. Now you have this ID and you can get on the plane called business. But in reality, your brand is the jet fuel that powers the plane of your business, that carries you to your eight-figure goals and nine-figure goals and gets your business where it's going. Because like I mentioned earlier, if you're just putting out marketing pieces that don't mean anything, you're just throwing dollars out the door. But right. if you, or even if you're not paying for marketing yet, you're, you're so early on that you're just putting together your own website, which we've all done that. We all started there. <laughs> yes, um, right. or, or maybe it's your social media. Like you feel that it's not where you want to be, but you're getting intentional and consistent. You're starting to post stuff every day. Well, it still is very important to pay attention to your brand in those early days to get intentional about it. And so like many people who say, I know that someday I want to work with you, Johanna, but right now you're delightfully expensive and I can't afford you. However, I still really want to make sure that the, the foundational bricks of my brand that I'm laying myself mm -hmm. are something we can build on when we get to that space of working together. So I have like a service called a brand 360 where I help people much smaller um, price tag for, for those people who know they're going to DIY it, but I want them to DIY it very successfully. And I want to help them build the roadmap and the direction so that when they, they begin um, building a brand that's already dripping with magic and then down the road when they get help on it, 
we just add to that castle instead of having to take something down, start completely from scratch and rebuild brand perceptions. That's great. That's great. That's, I wish I had somebody like that when I was starting. Cause I mean, I just, you know, I got a, when I first started, I didn't have a, um, a logo, but I just used my name and I did some fancy font and, you know, whatever, some decent font, you know, not too fancy, but you know, a, a, a font that I thought was elegant yet, you know, you could read it, you know, and too, you know, too crazy that nobody can understand what it is. Um, and then just some colors. And I just kind of started there and made it simple in the beginning. And of course it's evolved over the years, but, um, and I think, you know, I, it's been a while since I've changed, um, you know, my branding and I've recently started thinking about, you know, changing up my colors or, but I, you know, it's, I built that. So that's a, a question I'd like to ask is when do you, when should you think about changing your branding? You know, so it's been, oh gosh, I don't know, six or seven years now since I've changed it. You know, I have my logo and I have my colors and we're using it, you know, I've up um, leveled my, my marketing right now and we're being very consistent with, you know, videos and carousels and all kinds of stuff that are going on right now and using all of those brand colors. So it's probably not a great time, but when is a good time? Like if you already have some branding and you've had it for many years or several years or whatever that looks like, when is a good time to change that up? That's a great question. It de probably depends on some of the other statistics like you mentioned, like what's happening in your current marketing efforts. Um, the first question I would ask if someone came to me and said, is it time to change my brand? I would say, uh, well, is it still serving you really well? Is it taking you to your current goals? Are you expanding like you want to? Do you feel like you're still appealing to your most perfect client? Or mm -hmm. do you feel like right now you're appealing to a client you were happy to, to work with and that tier three years ago, but now you're ready for an up level. You're ready to be able to raise your prices. So mm -hmm. some like indicators when people and indicators when people say it's time to change their brand or evolve it or um, sometimes it's not a drastic change. It's just a simple solution that brings it to a new level of elegance. But indicators would be um, you want to be able to raise your prices and you can't because everyone knows you as this thing. Right. And so you're stuck in that camp forever. Or right. they would be that, that kind of state of embarrassment when you think about it. And maybe no one else says anything, but how you feel about your website, your social media, your digital marketing pieces, your free downloads, your client workbooks. Like, how do you feel about those? Do you feel like they represent how you have evolved? A great mm -hmm. brand should evolve. It always will. Mm -hmm. But ideally, when it's created on that foundation, it will be an evolution that just continues to spiral you upwards versus like build over here. Now we got to come over here, start a new camp, get a new name. Start yeah, over yeah. with the domain, rebuild. So it might be that. Or in large companies, like I've done brand work for um, Whirlpool Corporation and some of those larger companies back in the day. Now I primarily focus on founders and more personal brands. But uh, when I would do stuff for them, I would work on their brand guidelines. And they are intentional about evolving every three to five years. Like... Mm -hmm. They just have it on schedule and say, right. we want, we want to stay fresh. We want to constantly attract, we keep our finger on the pulse of the market and say, what is this generation looking for in our products? And so right. they have it on a schedule and it's not a shock and it's not a bad thing. It's just like every three years, it's time to update the brand guidelines. It's time to make some changes. Now their actual logo maybe only pivots a tiny bit every once in a while, like KitchenAid logo still looks like the KitchenAid right. logo. It's right. evolved. You still recognize it. So figure out how can you evolve, but keep the recognition, right? That would serve you well. Or right. some people want to pivot to serve a totally different audience. Like I worked with a um, gourmet toffee company who was uh, serving – Mostly one-on-one -on -one customers, they, they had a very small town feel, which can be cutesy and nice depending on your goals. Right. 
but their their goals were to actually increase their revenue by attracting corporate gifting clients, very large ones. And they wanted to compete on the national scales, with luxury chocolatiers like Godiva. Mm -hmm. And looking like small town, one scattered website on your messaging, but two, even the brand visuals, the logo, the colors, all of those things, it felt very like little west town and so <laughs> so we shifted everything about that they kept their name but everything else changed and when we did that they immediately doubled their previous annual revenue in the first month that their new web launched solely from corporate gifting alone so their like most ideal client that they'd been struggling to reach to connect with to tell them we have what you want we have the perfect gift every time and when we shifted to talking to that client it did amazing things so just to recap because i said a lot there <laughs> time, a, it's such good, information. good times to evolve or ask yourself is it time to shift my brand is it serving you how you think it could be is your website of your sales team like is it selling for you in your sleep, or at least getting a, a, a line of raving fans that are ready to jump on a call with you? Right. Are you able to charge what you are worth right now? And do your brand visuals validate that value to the world? Mm -hmm. That's the um, are you a little bit embarrassed by sending people to your social media or your website or giving them a business card? Like, are you embarrassed by that? And if so, it's probably time for a pivot because you should be your biggest advocate. Right. And, and I would say even though large corporations may build in the evolution and they do it automatically every three to five years, smaller businesses and small being under 30 million, they're pivoting much faster. The market is shifting so rapidly these days. So the time to evolve may be six months after you made your last change, if it's no longer serving you, if it's no longer fueling your business jet in the direction that you want to go. Great, great, great. So um, uh, early on when I first started here, I, I had, we were going to talk about what's the, when is the right time in your business to invest time and money into branding? And we sort of answered a little bit of that earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, but I would give it a more concise answer and say the right time is when you are being held back from your goals by your current brand. And you know that investing money into this will have a great ROI. And so, again, that's something that you might need to talk to someone to find that out. Like I offer free consults for that very reason. Because I want to work with clients that this is the right time for them to invest in their brand. And if right. it's not the right time, I'm going to tell them that because back to way back at the beginning, successful results for both of us depend on it being a good move for them. Um, so it's always the right time for branding. I would actually split, split that thought up into it's either time or money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes both. Sometimes but both, yeah. The, the right time to have at least the brand vision and knowledge of your value and what makes you this in the world and be clear on your brand messaging is from the very beginning. But, but that may be more of you doing it on your own at first. Maybe just getting that brand 360 or something like that from a professional and getting some direction. But I believe the time is always... Like it should always be on the brain when you're building a business. So we may have touched on this, but I want to make sure that we're clear on this because it's a really, um, uh, it's something that I want to cover, but how can I leverage my brand to attract more individual clients instead of my brand attracting lots of unqualified leads um, that, and then uh, I have to spend all my time sorting through. So we touched a little bit on that, but I want to kind of address that. Cause that's, yeah. you know, I, you, you know, <laughs> I get, I was lucky enough to, 
later on, once I had my website going, and then I did a little bit of SEO on the back end of my website, which was mm-hmm. has made me so much money from doing that. And I did not spend a lot of money, but I had a company go in and do the SEO. It took a few years for it to really, the algorithms to get like Google to really recognize it. But I have to tell you, I have every year I get a lot of nonprofits because I'm ranked really high for nonprofits. Um, but you know, there are times when, and I, it, it now I'm, I think I'm now at the point where I'm getting the right, you know, the right people are coming, but you know, you get a lot of tire kickers and I know there's a lot, especially weddings. If, um, you're doing weddings, there's a lot of, you know, wedding couples out there who don't have the money and we want to make sure that, you know, we're not having to go through and spend so much time with them. I know just a little tip on that before you answer is you don't want to spend an hour on the phone with somebody. You should have like, you know, I learned this. I spent way too much time, you know, talking to people and, and you know, I now have got it down to within like the first 15, 10 to 15 minutes, I can kind of tell if that's going to be my client. So that's something that we work on in my coaching program. But um, I think that's a piece that's important is that that piece there. But you know, what can you do with your brand to, to make sure that you're not, you know, getting unqual- a lot of unqualified leads? Yeah. Well, yeah, we did touch on this a little bit, but let's bring it all together. So yeah. unqualified leads come from unclear messaging. They come from lack of certainty or understanding on your part about exactly who you want to work with and the big problem you solve for them. So when you first take the, take the time, take the energy to start asking you things, what's my X factor? What do I do better than anyone else? What do I do that everyone thinks is like super hard to me? It's so easy. And you start getting really clear on how you want to serve. You ask who benefits from this more than anyone? Who am I uniquely qualified to serve? Who do I absolutely love working with what is my like expanded vision for who I could work with and you get really clear on that so you identify your ideal client and you identify the the problem you solve for them then you create that brand messaging and you consistently use it everywhere that you show up so on LinkedIn what does your bio say that you work with who does it how do you address your Facebook posts attention Like, so, so how do you um, connect with those people? And then what does your website homepage say? Your messaging should be clearly wireframed through the page in a way that it speaks right to the person you want to work with. And that starts with you getting there on it, which is why like step one for any of my clients is we do the strategy and the message to, to build on. But then people don't always read, right? They don't always take time to pause and read. So, right. not <laughs> so the words are half, yeah. Nope. Not, so not words are half the coin. Sure. Words are half the coin and the visuals are the other half of the coin and you need both sides. So then it's once you're clear on who you want to work with and what you're saying to them, intentionally create visuals, get like on purpose about the photos that you're using. Do they help Tell that story to the person you want to talk to. If, if it's luxury, like my website literally is dripping gold. That is because I want it to polarize, like we said earlier. I talk mm-hmm. about being delightfully expensive right there on the site. And people come and know, like, oh, she's talking about being delightfully expensive. I'm here because I want to work with the best, not because I want to get the cheapest price. So anyone that is looking for the cheapest price automatically steers themselves away from my work. They may sometimes still reach out. They'll lead with that and they'll say, hey, I saw that, you know, you do luxury branding and I'm not quite ready for that. But do you have any entry level offers? Because I really love what you do but I already know it's, it's not quite for me, which is right. why the brand, the brand 360 came to be like, I wanted to help them create a foundation. And so they're not in a fight lead anymore. They're, they're announcing themselves as like, Hey, I'm possibly an unqualified lead, but I still really am a fan. I'd love to work with you. Is there a way? Well, that's no longer a waste of your time to right. talk to because if they're like, if you're, 
your brand visuals and your brand message are crystallized around serving and addressing the, the problems that you are having and the magical experiences that you are providing, they will um, speak directly to those people and they're not ready right now. They're someone that is going to be a client in two years or five years. And so that's also no longer a waste of your time. Like right. it's still attracting people that will, will ultimately be clients and it's maybe polarizing away those that aren't. So it lessens that. And also sometimes people are totally qualified leads and they just say, nah, it's expensive. But the reason they say that is because you don't look like it should cost that much. You don't like your visual may not yet, your, your brand may not, say this person knows what they're talking about i simply have to work with him and so they're going to kindly tell you ah, like thanks for talking i just really don't think i can afford that right now right but <laughs> do you know <laughs> how many times what i can afford is actually simply based on the value i perceive that you're offering me and right. so they may not all be unqualified they may just be unimpressed Sometimes. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> that could be. I know when I, um, yeah. So I, a lot of times, you know, like I said, just, you know, get them on and don't spend a lot of time. Get. I had a coach that, um, you know, taught me this early on was, you know, I was spending an hour on the phone with people because I was off, I was, you know, giving them tips and offering so much information that I should not have been doing, but you know, I'm a giver. So there you go. But, um, and so I just, I really got it down to just about 10 or 15 minutes at the beginning of a call, which really makes a difference. But, um, and I think also my brand now has evolved after 13 years. It's, it, it pretty much speaks to what it is. And so, um, you know, I, so I'm, I'm kind of realizing that I'm, I think I'm doing some of the right things here. So <laughs> not to rock yeah. the boat, right. To kind of leave it where it's yeah. at. Um, I think I probably and could refresh on my website, but. A lot of strategy things that I'll let you teach them about, about that. You know, it, it, do, do you need a 15 minute fit call? Do you right. want an application? Like I have an application on my website. It's a very short one, very easy, mm -hmm. but it does weed out people that don't want to spend two minutes to tell me why they're worth that 30 minutes of free time that I'm going to generously give to them. Right. So you can do certain things, but again, that's more your business yeah, strategy I, and I'll let you tell, speak to that. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little bit more about brand 360 for those who are just starting and uh, let's hear a little bit about that. Yeah. So brand 360 is, us sitting down together for a 90 minute strategy session and taking a look at your brand from all angles. Mm -hmm. Hence the term 360. Um, a lot of times as business owners, we don't know what we don't know. We know our area of expertise, but it'd right. be really hard to see our blind spots. And so we, um, I do a deep dive interview. I do some content mining, dig out some of those diamonds of what makes you amazing at what you do. We talk about some of the questions we brought up here, like X factor and your ideal client. But even mm -hmm. those, like me just giving them to you is one thing and you can write it down and think about it. But having someone help you dive into that and go back and forth, like sometimes I can see things about you that you might not see about yourself. And so um, it's uncovering those and it's diving deep and it's saying, here's where I am right now. Here's how I'm showing up in the world. And then it's comparing that to everything you want to be and answering some of those questions of, is now a good time for branding? Is yeah. it time to get help? Or is it time for your existing team is like so prepared to do this? And here's some uh, ways that they can do it really well. So mm -hmm. we create We'll look at examples of some competitors, of um, some aspirational brands in your industry, outside of your industry. We'll say, who's doing this so well that we can reinvent the wheel and we can study their what they're doing and right. therefore give your, your content team some ideas on, like, adjust these things to do it better. But then we're also going to look at them and say, 
well, we didn't care about our brand just to look the same as everyone else. We're putting this thought into our brand because we want to stand out, right? Right. So right. we look at what are your opportunities to be different, whether that's in something in your messaging or something in your um, niche or something in your visuals. And so what it is not is brand implementation. That is that is what I do with my clients on a large scale. But this is creating a, a like a booklet and a strategy and something for you to say, I can see what great looks like now so I can move towards it. Yeah. it. Because it can be hard to know what, where you want to go until right. you sometimes see an example of, of it being done. Right. Yeah, so sure. I'll yeah. literally, especially, especially planners, you know, we, we have so many ideas. Like I can't even, you know, I'm always, whenever I have to plan a party for myself, I'm like, Oh boy, what direction do I go with this? <laughs> Cause I have yeah. so many great ideas. I can't imagine like, you know, what, what that looks like. So it's a struggle well, then, so, yeah, having someone else. I would never plan, you know, I've planned a few um, parties for myself, but small little things. But for the most part, if I was, you know, ever to plan a wedding or something, I would never do it myself. I would have someone else do it because it's just too much. I mean, I have ideas and stuff, but it's too much, you know, it's a lot of stuff. Well, then as a planner, you know, the power of using visuals and images to help with those goals yeah. too, right? Because words right. are a lot and we get tired of reading. So we'll yes. do most of the words we do most of the words during the strategy session right and then i provide them with like a brief and a written summary of some of the goals and the yeah. gaps and how can they steer towards that more outcome. but then we also will do screenshots of like look at this this is oh i want a blog that feels like that oh yeah. i want a social media grid that feels like this person oh i like we're gonna look at some examples of greatness and i'll I include those visuals and screenshots and notes and everything too, so that they can sit down with their team and say, okay, had this session. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now I know what I want to move towards. Right. I, I've seen an idea of someone doing it really well. Here's how I want to move, move us towards that. Here's how I want to surpass that. Yeah. And it just gives great. them a sense of visual direction. That's awesome. Well, I love that. That's really great. So thank you so much for joining. So much great information. How does everyone get in touch with you? Well, if this resonated, if they love this conversation and um, they're ready to create a far more impactful brand that's dripping with magic, they can visit my website, designedbyjoestudio.com, and they can click book a consult. Um, I can also, am happy to provide you with a direct link to the Brand360 that I offer. Um, I have it linked through Calendly, so I can give you kind of the shortcut. And if people sure. heard us talk about it today and they're like, I want that, but I will have to give that to you after this to put in the notes because it's like a URL. That's that okay. you're yeah, you, can do, you can give it to Christy and she'll put it in there. Okay. Yeah. But they can also visit the website, request a consult, pop on and say, I want N360. And I already yes. know that. Please just give it to me. So that's fine too. That's awesome. <laughs> well, you seem like so much fun to work with. So I can't imagine anybody not wanting to do that. And you and I need to talk just to make sure. But I have some other ideas that I think that we might be able to work together on some stuff. So we'll talk about that. But thank you guys so much for joining. We'll see you next week. It's going to be a different time. Uh, we're moving times around because availability from our guests and stuff like that. But um, we'll see you next week. Thank you all for joining. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.